Hey ladies. Oh, what a day, what a day. Um, so make it to stay here. Ladies and gents, sorry. Hey fam. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. All right, so this is my 29 week bump date. Uh, today I am 29 weeks and four days. Uh, it's been an interesting day. Um, last week, I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea what happened. And, um, I'm so frazzled right now. Uh, I probably shouldn't even be trying to, um, I probably shouldn't even be trying to record it right now. So, what happened last week? Okay, so last week, uh, I went to my preparing for birth class. I believe I talked about that in the previous video. Um, that was last week, Saturday. Uh, that was my, the first day of my 29th week. And then uh, I took my cat to the vet. Uh, I ended up having to take her to the vet again, so uh, she cost me about $700 in the course of a week. <sighs> Gotta love our animals, right? Gotta love our animals. So, <sighs> there's that. Um, I had a nurse case manager appointment last Friday. Um, <laughs> this is now my third nurse um, <laughs> since I've been pregnant. It's like they can't seem to keep people or something, or maybe I'm just not lucky. I don't know. Um, and I saw the midwife on Monday of this week. So technically that's in the um, 30 week update, but I'm just going to talk about up to today because that's really what I have to talk about. Um, so not much of anything else uh, has gone on. Oh. Uh, last Monday, I did take the prenatal breastfeeding course. So I took that. That was very informative about um, all the benefits of breastfeeding, how uh, it can reduce the chances of uh, basically all the woman cancers, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer. Um, it's cheap. <laughs> uh, you don't need a refrigerator. If the power is out, there's always a food supply for the baby. Um, she couldn't answer my question though about um you know having like alcohol while breastfeeding and um, the whole pumping and dumping so i know a lot of women now with breastfeeding are instead of dumping the milk are using the milk in the baby's bath so she couldn't she couldn't tell me whether milk that couldn't be given to the baby because of alcohol consumption whether it could be used in the baby's bath I guess um, a lot of women have, you know, used milk in that way uh, if it's set out too long or something like that. That way it gets some kind of use. She wasn't able to give me any expertise uh, on that. She talked about um, the ways of getting the baby to latch, the importance of um, getting the baby to breastfeed within the first hour of birth. Um, and all of that great stuff. All in all, it was a good class. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, there were a number of resources that came away. The hospital does offer um, lactation support when you come home from the hospital via phone number. So there's all of that. So that was good. Um, the nurse case manager, basically in my appointment with her, she wanted to make sure, goodness, I have a meeting in 15 minutes. She wanted to make sure that um, I was getting my TDAP immunization. So the T stands for tetanus, which I've had a tetanus shot before, but it's been long over 10 years. But the uh, DAP is the whooping cough uh, booster shot. So um, I haven't gotten that yet. She, uh, she said I could walk into the nearest CVS Walgreens and basically say, hey, I'm 29 weeks pregnant. I need a TDAP shot, you know, they'll use my insurance or whatever and they'll basically give me that booster there. So I will probably get that done 
um, maybe today, uh, if not today, tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to get that done this week. Um, why am I frazzled? Okay, so I had my, before I get into the why am I frazzled, the, I had my midwife appointment on Monday, um, so I was 29 weeks and two days at that point. Again, the midwife does not do any scans. She just listened to the baby on the Doppler. He was measuring about 140, 141 and on his heart heart rate. Um, he's been a little sleepy in the movement area. Um, and she had a little trouble finding him with the Doppler. He's just sitting so far back um, right now. You wouldn't know it because I actually have a bump now, which I'm going to show you. But, um, yeah. So... Other things that were going on is I received notification from my RE that uh, he has joined a new practice. So basically, he dissolved his practice and is now in another practice with some other doctors. Okay, now the reason why I received the notification is because my other embryos, the other four that I had that came back from PGS testing that were abnormal are still in his freezer and so I needed to submit paperwork to have them transferred and then possibly pay for storage which I've already paid for a year's worth of storage it's not been a year yet but um basically they wanted me to pay for storage at the new fertility clinic so the thing is the embryos are um, abnormal so uh, there was never any intention for me to transfer them and um, I always thought they would be discarded um, I understand that there's some paperwork you have to fill out when you want to discard embryos no one ever gave me that paperwork we didn't handle that like at my discharge or anything like that so he's just been holding on to these abnormal embryos the reality here is that um, I need these embryos discarded before I can do another IVF retrieval because my health insurance does not um, cover banking. So as long as I have embryos that are available to transfer, they will not cover an IVF retrieval. So it's important for me to um, dispose or discard or what have you with these embryos. Now, I will say I did not have any feelings about um, discarding the embryos until I was actually signing the paperwork. You Basically, the paperwork is 14 pages long. It has all these long explanations and all these scenarios. If the patient dies, if the patient and the partner get divorced, um, if I reach age 55, um, if they've held on to the embryos longer than five years, basically all these different scenarios, I had to check discard embryo, discard embryos, discard embryos, discard embryos. And with each time that I had to make that little X on discard, it was like a little pull, um, a little pull on the heart there. So that was tough. I mean, um, all these embryos, they are abnormal. Um, the bulk of them have abnormalities that are not compatible with life. So they would have either not taken or resulted in miscarriage. Um, at least one of the embryos could have possibly resulted in a live birth, but the live birth of a baby that would have had a lot of uh, problems. So um, that was difficult. I mean, I know that all four of those embryos are male. Um, those are my sons, you know, um, so that was, that was a little hard and, uh, I'm feeling it today because, um, I had to, they sent me the paperwork electronically. They were asking me to get it notarized. I mean, I don't walk into banks. It would have cost me $10 to get it notarized, but I took it into the office for them to witness it. That's free. So, um, I filled out the paperwork and then I signed it in front of them and then they witnessed it. And so they have it. So those embryos will be discarded. There's four of them. So mm, that makes me a little sad. <laughs> so then, uh, so that's what I did this morning. Um, I rushed in um, for a meeting that I had at 11 o'clock. It's 12.50. Okay, ladies. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> 
that was a phone call from the roofing company um and i had a meeting shortly after so okay um as i was explaining i rushed back for the meeting and uh while i was on that meeting i started hearing loud banging noises um and i wasn't sure if that was coming from next door maybe they were moving furniture or something like that so i was ignoring it for a while and then it started sounding like they were walking on my roof and i was just like well nobody told me <laughs> that they were going to start any roof work so um you know i'm like what in the world is going on so um i went outside sure enough there was a truck and then, and both of the guys i guess who were in the truck were up on the roof and i'm they didn't see me come outside so i came back in finished up my meeting and then i called the roofing company to find out what was going on because i had not received any further correspondence now I, i'm not used to working with roofers and how they operate and all of that but you want to talk about miffed miffed <laughs> so um they, first what they told me is that uh the first lady that i talked to was basically like oh i i only see the estimate signed paperwork i don't see the other contract and permit paperwork and i'm like er because i sent that stuff off like on the 6th of august today is the 14th of august so i'm like what do you mean you don't have my paperwork because i had to get it notarized it cost me 20 dollars because they needed two notarization stamps so ten dollars each and then um, I sent it to them electronically via email and then I mailed it to them physically. So I'm like, what you doing, my Willis? <laughs> so, um, so there's that. So that, so I got cut off because the lady was calling me back. I didn't hear the phone ring. She was leaving a message. So I heard the message and um, basically she was telling me they dropped off the materials and that because uh, the, actually this is the third lady that I talked to that called me back. This is the third lady. So the first lady told me they didn't have my paperwork. The second lady was just like, uh, give us an hour and we'll look it, look, look, look it up. Um, and then this third lady called me back. So in between the second phone call and the third phone call, I sent, um, I re-forwarded my original email to them with the electronic uh, version of the documents now I no longer have the physical version of the documents because those were mailed to them so I do have copies of them but I don't have the originals they said you know the permit uh, place sometimes they require the original notarized documents so they wanted that mail back and I've already mailed that back thank goodness I have copies but still if they needed another original I ain't paying $20 again to get that notarized you know so I'm like what you mean you don't have my documents so um uh let me see so yeah um basically they were calling to verify that they do have my paperwork that the materials that were dropped off were for both houses um but also because i had not received any further correspondence from them i wanted to make sure that um all of the work that i need done was being included which includes um the differences in the underlayment between my roof and the neighbor's roof um and my skylights i want both of my skylights replaced so um i don't want my old skylights i want the i want new skylights i want all of that brand spanking new and i've got two and i've got two different ones now they quoted me for the skylights but they were not part of my original estimate and when i before i signed the original estimate i asked if they were going to update my estimate to um include the skylights um and they said no you can just sign the original estimate so she had the look and she she found the notes on the underlayment but she couldn't find the notes on the skylights or whatever so um basically eventually she found the notes on the skylight or whatever so we did confirm that the quotes on the skylights and then i'm supposed to have a check for half the work um when they come so they're supposed to come on friday which is two days from now <laughs> to start this work and hopefully they'll finish because on Saturday morning, pardon me, I am taking my first aid CPR and AED for adult and pediatric class. So I'm, I'm not going to be here for a good part of Saturday morning. So um, they're going to call on Thursday to make sure weather is still permitting for them to come and do that. But I mean, I don't have a problem with them coming and getting this roof done because like I said, the 
tarp that was covering the hole that the tree did put in my house is now leaking. So I need my roof done to get all that stuff done. <laughs> so this is why I'm like frazzled uh, right now. So there's, you know, having to sign the paperwork to, you know, discard my embryos and then all this sort of confusion around uh, the roofing. I'm just like, what in the world is going on? And I'm like totally exhausted because I'm not sleeping well. And so all this is kind of going on at once. Um, and I feel like I'm sort of getting into my next bump date because this is all that's going on and I'm recording right now. But I don't want to forget all the stuff because this, this stuff is important. So like I said, I am um, taking the first ACPR AED for adults and pediatrics course. It's a hybrid online and in-class course. So I've got um, some two two hours, about two hours, probably two to, two to four hours worth of online work to do that I have to prove that I completed. And then I will go to the class on Saturday morning um, where I will get the hands-on um, experience and that will be the hands-on skills training and all of that. So that's like four hours on Saturday. So. I can uh, check that off the list and then I have one more birth class and that's going to be the uh, newborn care class and I am taking that next Wednesday so that's a week from today and that will be in the evening on Wednesday another four hour class so um, I will have all my birth classes now as far as my to-do list I still don't have a doula um, <laughs> I really need to make that a priority um, because time is getting short. Um, I'm going to be 30 weeks in a few days, which means I will have really eight weeks or less um, before giving birth. Um, and that means, what, five weeks to get all my stuff done. So I'm running out of time and I'm running out of money. <laughs> so, huh. It's uh, it's getting interesting. It's getting interesting at this point. So, oy, oy vey. Um, that's where it is. That's where it is, folks. That is where it is. Um, it's gotten late. I haven't eaten yet today because I've just been running around all day today, and then in between meetings, and and it's just been hard. So anyway, um. Even though I know you can see me in this chair, me and uh, baby J, uh, I'm going to get up and give you a bump shot. All right. Oh, so let me make my way up here. So I have on a, a bump worthy dress today. Hopefully you can see this really good. So here's the front and here's the side. Yeah, he's sticking out there now. Yes, he is. Right. And then I'll give it the other side. Yep, I can't deny. It's a bump. Still hard up here. And he's head down now, so, you know, I feel a lot of movement and stuff up here now. But, um, yeah, I'm sure he's pretty hungry. I'm pretty hungry. And um, I'm glad. Let me sit down so you guys can see my face. I'm glad that I'm getting all this roof stuff. Um worked out and uh oh <sighs> um oh here's the other thing that i found out so considering that my re had been my gyn for the last 10 11 years um and he's now moved to a practice which is a fertility practice and he doesn't have his own office anymore I confirmed when I um, got my paperwork vis witnessed that um, he is no longer practicing GYN anymore, which means now I need to find a new GYN. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. So <laughs> not only am I looking for a pediatrician for baby G, but I have to find myself a new GYN. So. Uh, because, you know, I'm going to be overdue for, well, I guess I don't have to get a pap smear every year anymore because I've never had an abnormal pap smear. So now they're saying you only have to get it like every three years or something like that. 
um, at least until I turn 40 or 40 something, I guess. I'm not 40 yet, but I'll be 40 in April. So I'm, I'm gonna need a pap smear. So I need a GYN. <laughs> so they have to find a new GYN. I also need to, if I want to still use the same RV, I need to see that his clinic is accepting of my insurance. More work for me to do because I want to do another IVF retrieval. <sighs> it's six months after I give birth. So basically seven, eight months from now. So I need to make sure that they're going to accept my insurance. Oh, this is just so much. Um, it's just so much to do. I am really, really overwhelmed. Um, and I still have stuff to do in the house. Um, as far as my leave, I did work out uh, my leave with HR, but I'm still trying to work out my leave with management. So um, what I worked out with HR, and I can't remember if I explained this in the previous video or not. If I have, then I will cut this part out of the video and you can just resort to the last video. But um, what I worked out with HR is definitely 14 weeks, 100% um, paid, but I wanna stay out for six months, which means I will come back May 4th, given baby G is born at, eight, at 38 weeks. So um, I will be on unpaid leave and there's there's all of that um however i've been hoarding all my vacation time not knowing whether i had an actual 14 weeks or not so turns out the 14 weeks will put me into next year and um i have about 25 days of paid time off that has to get utilized in some way uh or 24 days 24 days so I can carry over five days into next year, but I have to use them by the end of March, which is fine because my maternity leave would end in mid-January, so I would be able to use those days at the end. But the other 19 days, I would lose if I don't take them before I go on maternity leave. So the plan was, all right, I got to burn those 19 days, so I just have to submit that vacation time. So I talked to my manager, and t let him know that I spoke with HR. We worked out the maternity leave bit. There is the whole um, unpaid leave bit. And then there is the vacation bit. So um, we actually started putting some dates to the situation. And so what that meant is my last day of work would be September 16th. So he's not the big boss um, and I have a lot of responsibility with my team so um they are nervous <laughs> um i'm not surprised but they are nervous about me being away for so long um and going out so early because i am involved in a few important projects right now that are definitely going to go to the end of the year and into next year and they really want me around longer but the thing is i'm not leaving money on the table so Whatever they planning to do, they needed to get it together. So um, he said he was going to talk to the big boss man. So he did come back to me and uh, offered something, um, something along the lines of perhaps maybe being able to use my vacation those 19 days next year instead of um, using them right away, which would give me an opportunity to work longer um, but you know, they wanted to make sure HR was on board and all of that great stuff. I have not heard back from that yet. So as of right now, I still have no idea when my last day of work will be. And it is August 14th. <laughs> so it will either be four weeks from now, uh, or it'll be whenever this baby comes. So, uh, either that'll be eight weeks from now or doctor says i can't work anymore because of my blood pressure or because of whatever reason so as of right now that's all in the air but i've done my part i've done my part um i just need to know what they want to do with my vacation so i can submit it appropriately 
um, which is not really a big deal, but it's like stressful because I can't plan um, because I don't know what's happening. Um, I was getting used to the idea of being off uh, for the four weeks prior and, um, you know, figuring out what I was going to do with that time. But if I'm not going to be off, then I have even less time to do what I'm trying to do. And um, I don't know how this is going to pan out. And also working longer puts me at a higher risk of giving birth earlier. Stress. So as of right now, my blood pressure has been absolutely 100% great. Um, no issues whatsoever. It's not even starting to creep up. So I am blessed and thankful for that. But again, I'm in the third trimester. It can flip on a dime for no reason at all, just because. So we really don't know what's, what's gonna happen. But I will say if I have the opportunity to keep working, I would prefer to use that time next year where I will be paid and have less unpaid time considering all these unforeseen um, financial burdens that are coming up like ergo my cat where I just had to spend $700. So I've been trying to save money for my three months of unpaid leave, but it's like the more money I save, the more things that come up that require money. And um, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have some car repair between now and then as well. So it's like, I'll have to figure out um, how to get all this working. But I uh, am also putting my collection efforts um, on the to-do list as well because I have the fertility clinic uh, that I'm sure I have a credit, they need to send me a check. Um, and I could file my taxes. Um, that will be some additional money coming in as well. So, uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I am, um, it's a lot, it's a lot going on. It's a lot on my plate and, um, I'm just trying my best here. I'm just trying my best, but I'm going to get off because I don't know how long I was talking before. I don't know how long I've been talking here probably it's probably been about 30 minutes combined but this is what's going on right now and it's just like this is not what I need you know folks are like are you taking it easy and I'm like define take it easy you know I'm not moving around a lot but you know I just still have so much to do so much to do so um you know high priority um on the list of things to do get a doula <laughs> if not a postpartum doula just a doula somebody's going to help me at birth uh whether it be labor or c-section and um work on the whole postpartum doula thing um also maternity shoot i, I need to figure out what i'm going to do with that and um book it and also a 3d 4d scan which i have not had you know my mfm it's not giving me any 3D or 4D images. Um, I don't even know if they do them in the office. I know the machines are capable, but I don't even know that they do them. Uh, so I need to book that. <sighs> and I need to finish decorating my nursery. So I still have a little bit of work to do then. So my weekends are going to be busy. Um, this weekend, I have, of course, the first day CPR AED class. Next weekend, I'll be working. That'll be a working weekend. So it's just um, hey, <laughs> lots to do, lots to do. So um, I am a getter dunner. <laughs> so uh, I am going to be working hard to get this stuff done, but I'm going to exhaust myself, I know, for sure. And plus I have um, my Orlando shower coming up in a month, in about four weeks from now. So. <sighs> there is that so I uh, I got a lot to do folks I got a lot to do and I wish it were just shopping <laughs> I wish that was all but uh, you know the important things are getting done the roof is getting done so we get that out of the way and um, there so I'm gonna go get me something to eat because I am now starving 
starving and I know this one is starving so I'm gonna go get me something to eat and um, make it do what it do all right so sticky baby dust to all those TCC